have Harley Schlanger. And welcome back to the program, Harley. Thank you. Good to be with you. So, Harley, uh, you have fantastic news in several fronts, uh, the first being uh, the amazing uh, young candidate, female and black, who won the, the impeachment of Obama now has clinched the nomination for the 22nd District, the District of Johnson Space Center, Houston, uh, Texas, for the Democratic candidacy, and it has thrown the Obama administration into a tailspin because they tried all kinds of dirty tactics to abuse this young, brilliant black woman who, who uh, I told her that if she was running for president, I said, I would definitely vote for you. Uh, has a head on her shoulders, has an idea of the morality of America, understands the need for a constitutional reform to return to our original principles, Hamiltonian principles, to put in the firewall of, of Glass-Steagall, to rebuild the NASA space program, which, of course, the latest slap in the face is Elon Musk's SpaceX program, which is embarrassing the so-called public space program. It's either gone black op or private now, which I find an obscenity. Well, I think the to start with the good news and then to give the background to it, there was an effort to destroy the voters in the 22nd District. What the Democratic Party was afraid of is exactly what happened, which is that Keisha Rogers would win again. In 2010, with two opponents, Keisha got 54% in the uh, primary and won the nomination. And they attacked her, they bullied her, and uh, basically tried to say she's not a Democrat, but their quarrel should not have been with Keisha, but with the over 50% of the Democrats who voted for her. Now, this time, when she said she's running again, there were two opponents, and they caused one of them to drop out. They put all their eggs in the basket of the other opponent, but all they said about him is that he's not Keisha, he's not with LaRouche, he's with Obama. And for much of the Texas voting public, being with Obama is the kiss of death. <laughs> Obama, yeah, you exactly. could wrap Obama in bacon and Texas dogs wouldn't play with him. That's now, a good one. <laughs> he's gotten to the point where by slandering Keisha, they got people to not vote. In fact, the turnout on the Democratic side was under 7,200 votes in a primary. Last year it was 15,000 in that primary. So by smearing Keisha and attacking and, and refusing to discuss issues, they lowered the turnout. But what we did is we knew that we had enough patriotic Democrats and thoughtful Democrats in the district that we had to just get every single one of them out to the polls. And Keisha ended up with 51% of the vote. This is a huge defeat for the Obama team because they were the ones directing the campaign against her. Now, there's a chance that this could be repeated again next week in New Jersey. We're in the 5th Congressional District. Diane Sayre, who is a LaRouche Democrat, is on the ballot. So for all your listeners in northern New Jersey, Bergen County in that area, Diane Sayre is the LaRouche Democrat. She's had three debates with her opponents, and even the media has admitted she made mincemeat out of them. They made mistakes. They, they, they couldn't name the, the uh, president of North Korea. They didn't know Medicaid versus Medicare. They were just very weak, and Diane was extremely sharp. Now, what Diane and Keisha ha are running on, and the other LaRouche candidates are running on, is a simple uh, set of principles. One, Obama has to go, not in November or January of 2013, but now, Every day he's in office, our lives are in danger. And I'm sure we'll discuss this during the show. The second point is that with the European monetary system collapsing, and every time we get on, it's uh, every Wednesday at, at uh, noon Pacific time, the, the European system has gone through another ratchet collapse. But this will hit the U.S. We're either going to have hyperinflationary bailouts or systemic banking collapse. The only way out, the only thing that will work, is what LaRouche has been proposing, of immediately going with Glass-Steagall, which would stop the bailouts in their tracks. And then a national credit policy 
funding programs such as the North American Water and Power Alliance, which could create four to six million jobs immediately in productive infrastructure development. So that was their, slow, their campaign program. Obama out and the American system of economics in. And to the people we were able to talk to, and we didn't have enough money for media, so it was all door-to-door work. Our young people going door-to-door from early morning till late at night. We got enough people out to win again and give a very big kick in the stomach to Obama's re-election campaign. And we need to do it again next week in New Jersey, in the 5th District. Yeah, so let me just give you a little bit of a sense of what's happening in Europe. Uh, two weeks ago it was Greece, and the Greek situation was heading toward an implosion. Now, Greece is still imploding, but now Spain is imploding. Spain is about five times bigger as a debt problem than Greece. And the European Central Bank is trying to decide how to bail out the banks of Spain. And just as an example, one of them called Bankia had a deficit or had a problem that the Spanish government said, we'll cover it, it'll take 4 billion euros. Then a week later, 9 billion. The next day, 19 billion. And now the Spanish government is committed to giving 24 billion in a bailout to one bank. At the same time, they're cutting expenditures on health care. Now, here's something that, that, in terms of Greece, it was reported today that the Greek government is providing almost no food for prisoners, that people in the Greek prison system are starving because of the lack of money to buy food for them. This is what we mean when we talk about Nazi-style genocide being imposed by the banks, by the banks that are themselves bankrupt. And so it's this crisis which is causing people to turn away from Obama. Romney's not going to address it. The bankers aren't going to address it. They're just going to ask for bigger bailouts. And so we're in a situation now where where push is coming to shove. And the vote yesterday in the 22nd district in in, uh, Texas, in the Democratic primary, which elected Keisha Rogers, who's been a guest on this program before, uh, is extremely important, and it shows that th- that we can get Obama out. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, this, this is very v- important to understand how serious this is. Uh, I read some reports that the chemotherapy drugs uh, and the drugs for serious health conditions, people are really running from from hospital to hospital in Greece, and they cannot get the drugs. In other words, what's happening is in the next few weeks. Thousands of people are going to die because they can't get their treatment uh, for terminal illness, cancer, chemotherapy, drugs, heart drugs, etc. And hospitals and pharmacies all over Greece are going bankrupt right now as we speak. They're closing hundreds of pharmacies just in Athens alone. Yeah, and this, I I don't know if you heard this thing about the prisons, but the prisoners are on less than 800 calories a day in Greek prisons. That's almost starvation. And that's the level that the Nazis provided people in their slave labor camps. Yeah, exactly, yeah. In fact, uh, what we see happening is a cataclysm. And I think what's going to happen in Europe is uh, we see Spain also. There's a run on the banks already starting. In fact, I heard that by this weekend, that run could get a full clip, that we could have a massive run on the banks in Spain by this weekend. Well, it could happen. Back in just a moment with Harley Schlanger and the LaRouche Foundation. Stay tuned to the Nutra Medical Report Wednesdays. The LaRouche Foundation, Harley Schlanger, and of course, wonderful here, the Keisha Rogers won nomination in her District 22, Houston, Texas. back to the Nutra Medical Report, and Harley, uh, you know, I was watching Stephen Hawking's uh, show about uh, Brave New World, and last night we need to realize we're transitioning from the old-style economies, the economies where you have a tally stick or you do bartering. We've transitioned through the industrial age, and we're moving to an age where literally energy will become relatively limitless. We're moving from a level zero culture to a level one culture where nuclear fusion energy, the energy of the star, our sun, 
uh, is available to the population. It's been hidden technology. Again, this is an example of the black op, uh, operations of closing down NASA and our special programs. We will also move to where I believe education be, should be covered as a free for anybody. And, and if you have the capability at whatever level, whether you're mentally retarded and you learn skill sets that allow you to be employed or you're disabled or uh, you, you have a high intelligence but you come from a poor background, everyone should be able to get as far as they can in education. For every dollar you put in, you get a hundred to a thousand dollars back in value. In the future economy, let's say the mid 20th century, which isn't far away, 95% uh, of the value of the economy will production of information and intelligence, uh, literally information systems, new ways of printing things like printing parts. I was watching a program last night with uh, Stephen Hawking on the idea of printing auto, uh, air, uh, aerospace parts for airplanes uh, three-dimensional printing. Printing uh, was in, also, I've come up with a theory of well, how to print organs for stem cell transplantation. What you do is you print the the collagen backbone, you infuse the stem cells, you give these, quote, scalar signals to stimulate those stem cells because it's the backbone of the collagen that actually transmutes the specific gene signals to actually make the organ regenerate. And my theory I presented 30 years ago, it's called phonon maser biophysics to a panel of biophysicists, I developed a machine and have patents called the Dynatens based on that theory. And I was one of the team doctors for the Calgary Flames. So where we're moving is where intellectual property and infrastructure like Nawapa, which will cut down things like the forest fires in the Midwest and allow giant repopulation of areas. All these things are technologies that will come out of education, out of investing in geoengineering the planet in a positive environmental way, and not a negative one. Like So-called pseudo-environmentalists don't want populations to be in these areas. We will actually have areas where animals can thrive and survive. Maybe we can have a, an enclosed, safe area uh, for, for example, white rhinos if they can't exist in Africa. We can have a safe area in, say, uh, San Diego County. We already have the wildlife park here. People need to realize that we are the stewards of the planet, but we have to invest in the future. We can't have 50% unemployment and children that will go in with a degree as young people and have no future. So, well, that's, I, and that's look the, the the way we're going now. We're not going to have young people because there aren't going to be people who are going to have children because they're going to be so pessimistic about the future. Uh, we already see the declining birth rates in in Western Europe. The, the United States and Russia, even China now. But the, the whole be behind this is a fear of technology, a fear of science, which is not a fear that the average person has because most people are curious about how the world works. It's a fear that stems from the highest levels of the oligarchy. Going back to the Roman Empire, the Venetian Empire, the British Empire, their fear always is that as people learn more about human beings and the human mind and apply the uh, discovery capabilities of the human mind to our physical existence, that it will break down the power of an oligarchy which depends on people being superstitious and fearful of those who have power. Well, I think what it is is uh, you've got a, a, the basement team doing a lot of discovery and, and discussion of this. It deals with the very nature of what I call, and I don't believe in evolution in the classic sense, I believe in what I call progressive recreation, where the creator of the universe literally recreates at a higher order. There's no such thing as interspecies or transitional species or whatever. And what we're seeing right now is mankind is in a transition to a new kind of mankind that literally can, can reach across the stars, can travel through wormholes, can stop disease, can geoengineer the planet, can literally protect us from near-Earth objects and coronal mass ejections or, you know, gamma bursts of local stars. Uh, we have to start realizing that we are, in a sense, going to have to make first contact with ourselves that we are going to soon reach what's called the intellectual singularity, where a generation from now, mankind will not be just looking at getting the new laptop or iPad, but the access to literally limitless information directly funneled into the brain, where you can literally download an entire college education in a matter of hours. This is a real possibility. People say, that's not possible. I said, I don't believe in the word impossible. Uh, I don't believe in violating the human genetics, but I do believe we can wipe out disease and we can enhance what we are and utilize our full capacity, which is far more than we've ever used in the past. Well, and that's exactly the point, that if you have a population which, has, which develops its sovereign creative mind, where you have 
you know, not everybody's going to be a scientist or a creative genius, but most people can at least participate in that through science and technology and can benefit from it. The whole idea of the British oligarchy at the end of the 19th century was to take that away from people. Now, you may remember, even as late as, say, the 1950s, magazines like Popular Science were read by everybody. People liked to have a backyard workshop. They were playing with motors and with radios and with transmitters and things of that sort, where people wanted to have a, a connection to uh, power machines and, and technology. And now a lot of that has been lost for replaced by lust of, for video games, gambling, things of that sort. And I attribute that to the whole theory that the universe is chaotic and, un, and non-comprehensible, and that the only way you can know anything is through some kind of uh, esoteric knowledge. But through human creativity, you can't discover principles. And so you take away from people that which actually enables them to increase the power of the human race over nature and instead say to them, you're destroying nature, man is a blot on nature, which is what the, came out of the British uh, monarchy's Prince Philip and his alliance with the former Nazi Prince Bernhard of uh, Holland when they founded the World Wildlife Fund. They weren't so concerned about wildlife. Have you ever seen these pictures of Prince Philip on a hunt? He kills elephants, tigers, lions. He doesn't care for wildlife. That was a front to convince people that man is the enemy of nature and the planet. And this is where the whole global warming hoax came from. You know, there is global warming, but it's not caused by factories and cars. Did we lose you again, Dr. Bill? Yes, I guess we're going to be switching over your microphone in one second. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, so we're over to the ISDN. Yeah, so what you were saying, we, we are dealing with an oligarchy which is hostile to human advance. Exactly, exactly yeah. yeah. And, and so, in fact, what we have is a situation where... Um, we have an anti-human uh, agenda by a bunch of what we call a subspecies uh, that are disconnected. And uh, one of the principles I try to teach on the show is to try to move people along to a different perspective because you can't really change people's minds by a good argument. You have to change their perspective first, which is why I like the Lewis Foundation. You try to improve people's perspective and give them the possibility of options, not only for them personally, but for mankind, so we don't need to move into a dark age where people have these fear about the Mayan prophecies and the end of the world. In fact, it's a time when a new world is going to start, not with false peace, but with a real peace that starts with unleashing the human spirit. Back in just a moment with Harvey Plants. Welcome back, and uh, Harley, we have uh, a number of issues that have come up that are pretty uh, disturbing. Uh, the first is that we're seeing not only the crash of the economy in Europe, but we're now seeing move by Obama at the latest uh, G8 meeting and the NATO meeting to transfer our military underneath NATO and also to transfer uh, to a new super banking authority that will basically try to create this new uh, funding arrangement, just like the FDIC. They are trying to push for a FDIC of Europe, if you want to call it, and a world FDIC where basically if, if the nations are going under, every other nation will literally go under as well. Uh, we know that this kind of arrangement is a guarantee to collapse the world economy because they're not really building new economy. They're just amplifying the debt at the same time that the credit is actually contracting. So well, there's, there's one thing that uh, you just said something very important about this idea of a European FDIC. What they, what they did at the G8 meeting in... Uh, Camp David and the NATO meeting in Chicago is impose the view that no member state in these two alliances has a right to its own internal deliberative process. No parliamentary or congressional deliberation that all the decisions are going to be made up top above the nation. For NATO, what that means is if they decide to go to war against Syria, all NATO members have to support that war. What it means with this FDIC is, is even more pernicious. What they're saying is that if one nation's banking system is collapsing, other nations have to bail it out. 
Now, this is something totally new. I mean, the idea that the Spanish banking system now becomes the responsibility of the German taxpayer to keep solvent, when there are many Spanish bankers who were crooks, who made fortunes at buying worthless paper and piling it into the bank, and now waiting for someone to buy that paper to take it off their hands. Why should a German, someone in the German population, or the French, or wherever, Austria, and wherever there's a surplus, why should they have to bail out crooked bankers in Spain? Now, the same thing is true in this country. Why should you or I have to bail out crooked bankers on Wall Street? Uh, so we're actually getting to the point where it's going to be determined. Are the people sovereign, or are they mere subjects and slaves of a global banker dictatorship? That's the issue that's coming out after the G8 and the, the NATO summit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The, the situation, I think, is a prelude to a contrived and engineered world banking collapse and a banking holiday coming down the road, isn't it? Well, you know, the, the, the banking <clears throat> holiday, if it occurs, will be occurred to figure out what to do after the collapse of the euro. And so I, I'm less afraid. I'd like to see a banking holiday where they go in and audit the banks and then say, okay, starting Monday, all the bad assets are going to be on your books, that is the bankers, and the government will protect the commercial side, that is the depositors, the savers, the business accounts, the legitimate banking, that will be protected. But if, if you did that, a banking holiday to do that, I would support it. They're talking about a banking holiday to figure out how to loot what's left in people's savings to cover their bad debts and uh, uh, bad investments. Yeah, in fact, uh, what you're talking about a banking holiday, and I, I think that these are the fulcrum issues that are likely to cause a banking holiday. Number one, we're likely to see a, the start of a true bank run on a major economy. Greece is only 2% of the European economy. Uh, Spain is more like 24%, and Greece is, uh, is 2%, uh, so it's 12 times as much. We know that the major uh, French, the French even on higher leverage to the Greek debt than the Germans. So I see a kind of a domino effect that if it starts this weekend in Spain, it'll probably result in a devolution of the European economy by the midsummer or fall. And, uh, you know, I saw a comic in North County News here today that says, what are the states we're most concerned about in terms of the economy? And the states they mentioned were uh, Greece, Spain, Italy, et cetera, in Europe. It's, he's not paying attention to the fact that the unemployment rate is shooting through the ceiling here. And now uh, somewhere around uh, in danger, half a million people are in danger of losing their economic benefits, their, their, their unemployment benefits early, literally at the start of summer. 80,000 this month and up to half a million by this, the end of the summer will have lost their 99-week um, benefits, meaning we have millions more people on the unemployment rolls, so they keep fiddling with statistics and telling us that they've got it under control. It's like oh, firefighters... So you're missing, you're, you're just so negative, you're missing the big picture. The good <laughs> news is that these people who stop collecting uh -huh. unemployment no longer count as unemployed. There you go. You and see, so the unemployment that, that, rate will drop. See, that, that's actually another way of fiddling the numbers. That's from Obama. Yeah. In other words, uh, it allows them a, a, new, a new asset, a new way to lie in the statistics. As they used to teach me in statistical class years ago, there's three types of things. There's lies, damn lies, and then statistics. Well, and, and also, you know, it's the, the doctor who says, the good news is you're going to die soon. Uh, and they say, how is that the good news? And you say, well, it's not going to cost you anything more to stay in the hospital. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, we're, we're at a point where everything is going to go. And, and this is something that your, I, listeners, your listeners have to get this point. Right. Their, their savings could evaporate in a minute. Well, I, here's what I expect. If we see a bank holiday, uh, I think it'll be a bad bank holiday. And what I've heard from my sources is that there'll be a four to one exchange for the U.S. dollar, which means if your loaf of bread was two fifty, after a bank holiday, it'll be ten dollars. If your gasoline was uh, four dollars, at the end of the bank holiday, it'll be sixteen. That's what well, we're see, facing. This is, and this is the point that what happens under this kind of uncontrolled hyperinflation is that. The, however much money you've put away, even if you put away a million dollars, you could take the three zeros off the end of a, a million 
overnight. That's what happened in Russia with the devaluation under Yeltsin. So the people who thought they had some money ended up with nothing. And this is, in fact, where we are today in the West. And, and the Germans are the only ones who are really conscious of this because of their history where they went through a hyperinflation. Yeah, I, I talked to some Russians that told me a good joke about that. You want to hear this one? Sure. Uh, one Russian said to the other, he said, you know, we have uh, Yeltsin uh, did a redevaluation of the, uh, of, the, of the Russian ruble, right? And he says, well, he said, don't worry, I have my savings. And the guy walks over to the other Russian and says, come here with me. He walks into the kitchen, opens the refrigerator, he says, I have all my savings in here. And he opened it up and he had the refrigerator full of Russian sausage and borscht. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and probably the freezer full of vodka. Exactly. Well, and you see, under conditions like that, a freezer full of vodka is at least worth something. Yeah. A bank account with rubles was worth nothing. Exactly. In Weimar, Germany in 1923, a bank account with Reichmarks was worth nothing. And very quickly, and this is, this is not just me speaking, LaRouche has been saying this for a while and warning about it, but now it's in the Daily Telegraph, the Economist, the uh, uh, Le Monde in France, uh, the Handelsblatt, the business paper of the German economy, they're all saying that you could have a hyperinflation triggered immediately, which would wipe out people's savings. This is now. This came up in Britain two days ago, when Prime Minister Cameron met with his uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer Osborne, with uh, Lord Turner, the head of the Financial Services Administration, and Mervyn King of the Bank of England. They had a private meeting for several hours, and what they announced afterwards was quantitative easing. That is, well, going to bail out I, Royal Bank of Scotland and so on. And this is at a point where British inflation is up, and they're in a so-called double-dip recession. I'm going to throw out a very ra radical statement here that no one, including Gerald Salente, will say. But I believe that the thing that's going to crack is not going to be Europe. What's going to crack is Japan. Japan reactor cooling pool 4 is about to collapse. It'll probably do it within the next two months. Not six months, not a year. When that happens, they're going to do a mass evacuation of Tokyo, and the Japanese economy, which was the second largest, now it's the third largest economy on the planet, will collapse, and the amount of debt that they were purchasing from Europe is going to disappear. When that happens, this will take all the pressure off Europe because it won't just be a European problem, it'll be a Japanese problem, a mass evacuation of up to 40, 45 million Japanese with a massive radiation cloud circulating the planet. That's going to happen, I believe, by this summer. And when that happens, the world economy is going down for the count. And you're going to hear 9, 10 euro on the map. <laughs> Welcome back. And, uh, well, if people want to connect and actually get plans, I tell people the uh, idea is that on this program we want to not to convince you through logical arguments because we want to emotionally connect you to the issues. We also want to empower you. And the only way we change uh, people sometimes is humor. Sometimes we have to create an emotion. Maybe it's you're pissed off at us. Maybe you love us. Maybe you just feel a revulsion for the, now that you know the truth. Maybe you feel guilt. But anything but apathy. The most important thing is we are in control. We are co-creators of our future. Our creator God gave us rights, not governments. And this is why America's Constitution is so sacred. Yesterday we had in the program Phyllis Schlafly uh, from the EagleForum.org. And the fact is, if we don't stand up this time, if we don't stand up this time, and now we have the candidacy of none other than Obama fighting Mitt Romney. And Mitt Romney, of course, is what we call Flip Hananiah Romney. The only way that I and any of the conservatives will vote for him against Obama, which we have to get out. But honestly, he should be taken out long before this election. And it may start with the process of striking him from the voter rolls in Arizona, which is almost certain to happen, because it's now, I think, almost 10 weeks now that the Hawaiian uh, birth certificate registry will not provide a valid birth certificate to the Arizona uh, registry office for voting. Uh, I think that it's, we're going to see an implosion of Obama in the next few months. And despite the so-called astrologers convention and all five top astrologers voted in their astrological analysis of the star signs that Obama was, was going to be reelected, I think we not only need to get new astrologies, they need to have new star charts. 
because I think Obama is toast, especially even despite what called Mitt and I Romney and his black uh, be, past behavior where he flips on issues like pro-life even though he was a Mormon bishop. And the Mormons, by and large, are very conservative, in fact, more conservative in many ways than even Christians, that he's going to have uh, about a dozen choke chains on his uh on his Mormon bishop, former bishop's neck, uh, saying that if you don't do A, B, and C, we will paralyze you politically, and you will be able to do nothing. He'll be a lame duck president. Obama, of course, has already made statements to Mr. Medvedev about a month ago that don't worry, once I get reelected, I'll do whatever I please. That's a praise. So we have to understand that, that Obama is evil. He is a bisexual, uh, uh, Sunni Muslim, high-level Mason, Satanist, and he is completely anti-human, and he's not concerned about the fact that he's promoting policies that will make uh, women in Angola abort their babies or have to breathe in ammonia uh, from the carbon credit garbage. He's not uh, worried when he allows 700,000 acres of U.S. The sovereign territory to be given over to the frackers to frack the hell out of the ground with toxic chemicals, and they don't even need to tell you afterward until after they're finished what fracking chemicals. And then he won't let us finish the 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 Excel pipeline, which would mean rational to bring in safe oil from safe areas. Uh, this man is a schizophrenic whack job from hell, and he's got a neuro complex that is extremely dangerous, telling the Israelis, don't worry, I'll give you all the long-range tanker bombers, uh, but don't start a war until after the election. I mean, well, he really see, is suicidally dangerous, and if we have this man in there, we're going to have World War Three. Did you see the uh, New York Times coverage on Monday? They had a big article called The Killer List, or The Kill List, and it was about, it was an interview with oh, yeah, I saw that. people who have been involved with Obama who provide for him what they say are the equivalent of baseball cards. People remember what baseball cards are, where you trade your favorite player, with a picture of the alleged terrorist and then their terroristic deeds and statements. These are then given to Obama, and then he, like Nero, gives thumbs up or thumbs down. Which ones will be killed? Which ones will not be targeted for killing? Yeah, and, and whether or not those predator drones will knock out their entire family, an extended family that has not involved, just because the value, relative value of killing this so-called target individual justifies killing 56 relatives. And the article tried to portray Obama as a decisive leader who's willing to make the tough decisions without even flinching. Oh, no, he, he, he's, he's drooling in there, sitting in the Oval Office or the Blue Room behind the Oval Office. This guy is a sadist. He's a maniac. Well, and you know, there are many, many words I could use to describe him, but the one I would say is the most uh, damning is impeachable. Yeah. Because he's violating the Constitution in many, many ways. Well, look at the National and Defense Authorization Act. He apologized all the way until he, oh, sorry, there's no gun at my back. I'm going to sign it anyway. Then also the Expatriation Act that can take American citizens born in the U.S. on American soil with no valid uh, habeas corpus or anything and can even remove your citizenship. I mean, this well, is just this ridiculous. Is, yeah, this, is, this is the point. Now, more importantly, right now, they're using this latest atrocity or series of atrocities in Syria to prepare for a war to overthrow Assad. Now, this must not be allowed to happen. The U.S. military leadership are openly, repeatedly saying we cannot go into Syria. Now, what's the issue here? You may not have seen this, but the Daily Telegraph yesterday showed that this picture that was used, supposedly of the victims of the, oh, oh, the uh, guy, yeah, atrocities, yeah was from a 2003 photo of bodies in Iraq, not exactly. Syria. Exactly. And by the way, General Mood, who is the Norwegian uh, general, exactly. is overseeing yeah. the, uh, the entire process, was given information directly from the Syrian government that proves that they were not shot by, by, sh by mortar shells or whatever, but shot in close range by the so-called Syrian al-Qaeda terrorists that we are materially, financially, and geopolitically supporting people that are so-called our, our vaunted enemies that if you are, quote, even American citizen and you're even deemed maybe being al-Qaeda, we'll send a predator drone to kill you. And by the way, thank you, Texas, for leading the nation to say, if you see these predator drones, shoot the damn things out of the air with any means whatsoever. If you see a predator drone up over your state, shoot the damn thing down. Well, thank you, Texas. This is where you see the... the uh Hollande and France, who suddenly realized 
that he has no solution to the banking collapse in Europe. He's now saying the French are... He just announced they're pulling troops out of Afghanistan, and now he's saying the French are prepared to go into Syria. Now, oh, yes, come on you know, now. Uh, how stupid is that? And do they understand that the Syrian... Going to war with Syria is going to war with Russia. Well, that's, I was just going to say, here's the point. Those people who think that we can have another 10-year war in Syria, like the Iraq-Afghanistan war, are missing the point. The Russians and the Chinese are doing everything they can to keep an invasion from taking place. Because if an invasion takes place, they will be forced to respond. And this is something General Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, knows. This is something the Israeli military knows, that you're sitting on a tinderbox where they're about to throw in a bunch of matches. And who's throwing in the matches? It's Barack Obama, the Nobel Peace Prize winner. Oh, yeah, but you know, he, he actually did get the Peace Prize, but it's a new version. They spell it P-I-E-C-E, -E, pieces of people, pieces of nations, and pieces of the world. Well, and that's why, actually, if you want to praise something in Texas, I would praise the voters in uh, the 22nd District who chose Keisha Rogers yesterday as their, nominee, their Democratic nominee. And again, go to our website, lourishpack.com, and there's a story about this. I, I, helped, I posted the story this morning. It goes through how they attacked her, how they slandered her, and yet Keisha won. She won as an African-American Democrat campaigning on the impeachment of Obama, <laughs> the imposition of Glass-Steagall, and a credit system that would fund NAWAPA, the North American Water and Power Alliance. And by the way, we, if we don't have NAWAPA, if we don't have a proper near our space object program, we just had another space object that was between 3 and 10 meters across. That's big. We're talking about like 35 feet across. Whip past the Earth at 14,000 kilometers above the Earth. That's only about uh, 10,000 miles. 10,000 miles is a hair's breadth over the Earth. I mean, people don't understand. They had no advance warning this object was and coming the either. Russians, the Russians are pleading with us, let's put some satellites up. Let's get out there. Let's figure out what's happening because they know. And by the way, I saw something really interesting today uh, on the Italian earthquake and then on the... Uh, uh, the hurricane season, the warm. Two, two big earthquakes, by the way, that are on these fault lines that even Edgar Casey stayed. When you see the Mount Etna and Mount Vesuvius getting active in the Caribbean, you know the end of the world as you know it is coming. In the, in the Mediterranean. Well, here's the point I was going to make. The NASA scientists said this has nothing to do with anything on Earth, it has to do with solar activity. And so here we have idiots who believed Al Gore was a scientist who are trying to shut down what's left of our industry on this planet to do what? To stop the sun from sending out coronal emissions? Exactly. We know from our neutrino research and our research on solar uh, coronal mass ejection triggered superquakes and, and solar alignments and the bull shock wave of the cosmic background radiation as we pass through the galactic plane that Cody Jones went over. We're in for a world of a rough ride, and the world is not being told that we need to prepare for massive earth changes, and we can do it if we have advanced well, go, enough go warning. To Pack, go to LaRouchePack.com to get the story on Keisha, and spread it around. Obama can be defeated. He can and be driven out. And the phone number to call LaRouche at your organization yes, to get more 800, info is... 800-922-2907. 800-922-2907. Nine two 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 nine zero seven. See you next week. Take care. We'll be back in a moment with our health and wellness hour. Greg Jackson, hour three coming up. You know.